Welcome again for another beautiful session and on today's interest we are going to concentrate on what is known as the petty cash book and here we have a question that we are going to use to illustrate on our understanding and before that one I just want us to have an highlight on actually what petty cash book is and petty cash book is basically a day book used to record money set aside for small payments. It means that these small payments made, it must be made by some junior subordinate staff. And in normal cases, we are referring to these subordinate staff as the petty cashier. So we have the petty cashier who receives what is supposed to be paid from the main cashier so in other words the main cashier delegates duty to the petty cashier to delegate means to subdivide work so it means the petty cashier has to keep track he has to keep track of the money under his custody and for this particular reason it means that when the main cashier distribute some money to the petty cashier we say that a reimbursement a reimbursement has been done so it means the petty cashier can choose to keep what is known as the impressed system an impressed system refers to a scenario or a situation whereby the petty cashier makes small payments at intervals remember payments cannot always be made at once because they keep on accruing over and over again and that is why the impress system is always employed now here we have a question and this is what it states a petty cash of sinachuki traders operate a cash a petty cash book on an impress of 2500 so the impressed is 2,500. It means this is what they keep on a monthly basis. Every month they should not go below 2,000. It means their payments will always revolve around this amount, the total. Okay. On 1st February 2010, she had a cash in hand of 150 and was reimbursed the difference by the main cashier. So before this petty cashier began the making the payment, he had a cash balance of 150. 150. This one means it was carried forward from the previous period, which was January. And the difference that was reimbursed, the reimbursed amount is supposed to be 2,500 minus 150, giving a total of 2,300. 50 because he told that the the balance was reimbursed to him by the main cashier to restore her cash flow. It means for him for her to restore the cash flow, he must be given this amount of money to keep under his uh, custody. Now he told the following payments were made during the month of February. Now when payments are made, remember that. A petty cash book will normally follow the normal T format of a ledger. T format whereby we have debit on the credits uh, on the left hand side and credits on the right hand side. You told that amount received by the petty cashier is debited while payments credited. So amount received is known as the cash float. So it means the cash float will normally be debited. While well, the payments made by this cashier are going to be credited in the respective columns. So, I want us to begin our entries. <coughs> and we are told that this balance brought for us on 1st of February. So, we have the date on 10, 20, 2010, February. And we receive an amount of 150 was received on first detail here refers you are trying to explain the origin where did the money come from so it is the balance brought forward from the previous period 
Then before any payment was made, a reimbursement on the same date was made of an amount of 2350 which is the difference to restore the normal impress system that is supposed to be made. So when you add this to it's supposed to give you 2350 and this one is basically reimbursement. It was done to him. Then now we look at the payments that were made. On first traveling expense, so first we have traveling the amount was 110 now <coughs> these columns towards the right are going to include the particular items that were paid so it means you're supposed to have the first traveling column the amount was 110 the same amount then second correcting fluid was 200 the detail here was correcting fluid. Remember, collect, correcting fluid is used in vehicles, so it is part of traveling. The amount of 200 again, it falls under traveling. You don't have to open another, we don't have to open another column here for correcting fluid. <coughs> then we go to third sugar. For staff T was 180 shillings. So we have third sugar of an amount of 180 shillings, the total. But because now it is for staff T, it doesn't fall under traveling, we open another account known as staff T. Remember, staff T is a very common expense in offices. So we have 180 shillings. Next date is stamps. Stamps were paid an amount of two fifty five. Stamps fall under common expenses known as postage and stamps. So we open an account known as postage. So we have postage of an amount of two fifty five shillings. <coughs> the next was tenth. Tenth we had Telephone to 55. So we had telephone was paid. That is due to communication. 255. Again, it falls under telephone as an expense on its own. We record it here. We got to 15 entertainment of 130. So we have entertainment on 15. 130 because it cannot fall in either column here we create a column known as entertainment an amount of 130 then we go to 18 again we have postage because it for we already have a postage column we just record the amount of a hundred shillings we bring it here a hundred shillings under postage. Then we go to twentieth. We had bread. Bread was paid of an amount of one forty eight, and it falls under staff tea. So it is one forty eight under staff tea. Twenty fifth. So twenty fifth we had fare was paid. The amount of fare was 200 shillings. Fare is part of traveling, so <coughs> we don't open another, co another column. We simply enter fare under that one. <coughs> then we have 26th duplicating ink. So duplicating ink was an amount of 250. And this one is part of office expense. It cannot fall in any other expense here. So we open another account for office expense of an amount of 250 shillings. <clears throat> After that, we go to entertainment again on 27. Entertainment was an amount of 400 
then it falls under the column entertainment 400 we go to telephone on 28th so we have telephone of an amount of 100 shillings it was paid under telephone 100 shillings then we go to 28th the last payment that was made <coughs> at you know a creditor was paid 150 now payments made to creditors or payments received from debtors they are made under what is known as ledger so ledger combines the debtors and creditors amounts which are received or which are paid out so we have a tno is the name of the data the amount was 150 it's supposed to fall under ledgers the next thing to do after this is to get the total of each which are going to be because they are expenses they will be debited on the debit side of this account for example telephone account will be debited with the total of this amount so when you add this one this is 310 <coughs> 510 when you add this one suppose we are double underline this one is <coughs> 328 when you add this is supposed to be 355 this is supposed to be 355 again 355 you double underline everything this is 530 double underline everything this is 250 double underline and this one is 150 when you add and then this one <coughs> because this makes the total here makes part of the payment this value when you add the all this should not be more than the impressed of 2500 so we are going to see in fact there should be a balance if it is used all on this some balance so this is 310 410 we have 14 plus 255 plus 255 plus 230 plus 148 plus 450 plus 650 we get an amount of 23 98 so 2398 is the amount that was used which is part of 2500 so we get the balance which will be our balancing figure so 2500 minus the answer is supposed to be 102 so 102 is the balance that is being carried forward <coughs> but then we add all the only add these two are supposed to be 2500 you double the line we bring down 102 and then this is supposed to be 25 when you add this one to all this supposed to be 12500 so it means the balance that is remaining in these accounts is 102 shillings which is supposed to be carried forward to the next impressed period please don't forget to subscribe